Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 194, the sell at rest of matching values. All right, today's question from DW. I want to get the sell reference when an item in list number two is in list number one. So right here, when we're looking at this 59, uh, it is actually in cell B10. DW is looking for us to tell him that it's in B10, but you see a lot of them are not found. So my thought process on this is there are two easy ways to get a cell address, either the address function or the cell function with the address uh, argument. So let's take a look at those. All right, so there's address. This is a function that I hardly ever use and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to put in there. So a great trick that popped up from Nabil Murad and also from Deborah Doglish uh, in the last two weeks. If we not press Control A, but Control Shift A, it will insert the function names. Uh, so we can you know figure that out. So uh, if I would just, for example, put in here H7 and then column number one, and then absolute, do we want dollar signs, dollar signs just on the row, dollar signs just on the column, or relative, I'll choose relative. Uh, and then do we want A1 style, of course we do. So that's a one, and sheet text, we don't need to prefix it with sheet. All right, so that successfully returns A1, but then the big question is, what would happen if we instead of H7 said H7 hash. So in other words, that whole array, the whole sequence array over there. And address works great with an array. It returns all of those values. Another way to do this is using the cell function. And in the first argument, we say we want the address and then H7. But the question is, when we put in H7 hash, will it return the cell addresses from all of those items? And the answer is no, all right? So address can work with arrays and cell cannot work with arrays. I'm just going to take a side journey here. When I initially started thinking about this, I thought, oh, this is going to be one of those great uses for where we can use XLOOKUP with a colon next to it, right? XLOOKUP, if we just did XLOOKUP of D9 in list one, returning list one, we'll get the 59 that we were looking for. So there's the, the D9 and it gives us the 59 there. But if we would put the XLOOKUP colon XLOOKUP, uh, then amazingly that formula doesn't return 59, it returns B10, All right? And we can see this if we go into evaluate formula, I'll evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. Right here is about where it's about to do the XLOOKUP. And instead of giving us the 59, it returns B10. And that all happens because of this colon right here, okay? So we know that in XLOOKUP, we can look up all of our values at once. Uh, so look up everything in uh, D14 to D15. But when I try and combine this trick and this trick by saying, I want to look up two values, colon, look up the same two values, and then pass that to the cell address, it doesn't work. And here's why. If we come into evaluate formula and get to the point where it's about to evaluate that first X lookup right here, this is where it should say uh, B13 comma B12. Instead, it says 88 and 10, right? And that uh, shot down my first way to go. All right, so here's the actual solution. Uh, and for me, it was three steps uh, to get this. The first thing I want to do is use xmatch, the new function, uh, to locate where the item is in list 01. So a simple little function, uh, look up all of these values here in list one, and that's all. We don't need to say it's an exact match because it's, it's automatic. Uh, so the first one, the seven, is the second item in the list. 54 is not found, 59 is the fourth item in the list, 18 not found. All right, so that's good. Now we know uh, where the things are. Okay, then the address function, the address function says uh, which row and which column, all right? And I know that it's always gonna be in column two, so for the column part, uh, that was actually easy. I can just ask for the column of list 01 and that will return column two. Uh, to get the the uh, location as far as which row though. I started with the row of list 01, which because it's a dynamic array, gives me all of the rows. Uh, so I had to say, I want the index of that comma one, uh, which successfully gave me just five. I subtracted one to get up to the cell above that. 
and then added in the results of the match. Uh, finally out here, this four says that we want a relative reference. And that one formula returns all of these answers. So B6, B8, B6, B11, B10. If we would change something here, we'll take this 32 and make it B12. Uh, then that changes to B9, right? It's working except for the NAs. So finally, just wrap that whole thing in if NA uh, and display quote, quote. All right, so a single formula using address uh, to return all of those answers. Mike. Let's see what you have. Wow, that spilling formula is amazing, Mr. Excel. You get that little bit to look up row five, then you subtract one to jump back to four, and then subtract the array generated by X match, all to create the correct spilled row numbers for address. So I guess I better do an old school formula, and instead of address, I'll use the cell function. Now, anytime you're comparing two lists, match function is the way to go. We're looking that up within this list right here. That's a defined name, so it's automatically locked. And we're looking for exact match. So unlike X match, we have to put the third argument and say do exact match. That will tell us the relative position when one of the items is in the list. There's the fourth position, or NA. I'm going to put that inside of index because I really want to look up the cell reference. So we're looking through there, comma, and there's the row number. Now, of course, if you enter it into the cell, it returns the actual value. But F2, if you put index function in the context of a cell reference by using the cell function, and we ask for the address in the first argument, then index will know to deliver the cell address. Close parentheses. And to populate it through the cells that are highlighted, I use Control Enter. There we have our cell reference. Oh, but this is not like the address that gives us that cool argument where we can put a 4 to get relative cell reference. It's always going to deliver it with dollar signs. So F2, now we use substitute. That's the text, comma. The old text we're searching for is a dollar sign. And we'll replace it with double quote, double quote, which means nothing. Close parentheses, Control Enter to populate it all the way down. Now, I think if NA came in 2013 or 2016, so if you're in earlier versions, we're going to have to run the if formula. Now, that's the little bit that compares the two lists, so I'll copy that. And right after the equal sign, I'll say if. And then we'll use isNA, and we'll paste the match. Close parentheses, there's the logical test. If it's true, then I want to show double quote, double quote. Now, technically, that's a zero length text string, which will show nothing in the cell. Otherwise, it'll run the formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click, and send it down. So if you're in an older version, that formula will work. Now, let's see if we can get the let function. This is Microsoft 365, so the latest version. And I'm, before I use let, I'm going to use xlookup to try and look up a reference. There's our lookup value, comma, the lookup array, comma. And with xlookup, I have to list it twice, since there's only one column. And if I copy that down, of course, it delivers the value. But now, if I put it inside of row, this is a context where a cell reference is expected. And so like index, xlookup is delivering the reference, and row can see it and deliver the row number. And for 59, that's exactly what we need, F2. Now I did that just to see if it would xlookup would work. Now let's do let. And the name of the variable we're going to use is get. And then that'll be xlookup. And the advantage to using let is, of course, we're going to use this a couple of times, and let defines it as a variable and calculates it only once, comma. Our formula will be if na address. And then in the first argument, it needs the row. And that's the get variable, comma. And for column, we'll use column and the get variable, comma. And there's that beautiful 4 for relative cell reference. Now for comma, value of na will show nothing, double quote, double quote. Close parentheses, and there's our formula. We have one variable, xlookup, and our formula. 
it has that single input, and so it's going to deliver a single output. But since I have the whole column highlighted already, I can populate this with Control-Enter. All right, so super old school, super new school, except for it's not spilling. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. Well, isn't that cool? Two different ways, Mike. One using cell and one using address. Uh, both have to be copied down. But the thing that I learned there that I used to know and I forgot, uh, in addition to having the colon next to X lookup to coerce it into a reference uh, index row and column, all our tools for getting that reference out of X lookup. Very, very cool. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast. From Mr. Excel, Excel is fun. Oh my, it's Dueling Excel time. Stand by, it's Dueling Excel time. Oh my.